Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. This is the France 24 debate. Uh, we're looking at the case of Prisoner X, a 34-year-old Australian found hanging dead in his cell uh, in late 2010, his identity uh, revealed by a television report out of Australia. 34-year-old uh, Ben Ziegler with us to talk about it from Jerusalem. John Lyons, Middle East correspondent for The Australian here in the studio. Gil Mahaili, columnist for Yediot Aronaut, also uh, with us. Uh, from the uh, human rights law firm of uh, Bourdon is Amélie Lefebvre and Ron Sofer, um, who is a member of both the French, uh, the Paris, the New York, and the Israeli Bar. Uh, just before the break, uh, Gil Mahaili, uh, you were effectively uh, making the point that uh, involving foreign nations uh, in Mossad operations is only a problem if you get caught. Yes, of course. I mean, we understand why they, why you, why. Uh, Secret services do that. I guess other secret services do the same thing. Uh, it, it's problematic when you get caught, and of course, uh, presidents and prime ministers have to say what they have to say, and they're right. They're right. I'm sure that uh, it's less pleasant to travel with uh, an Australian passport in the Middle East today than three years ago. However, but surely, uh, surely Israel shouldn't do this, uh, Australia's meant to be a friend of Israel, shouldn't be illegally using Australian passports most, for uh, yeah, operations of assassinations. It's very difficult to answer this question because most things that uh, secret services do are illegal uh, in, the, in, the, in the regular world. Uh, that's, that's, that's their business. Um, and, and I think that, uh, and what, that's what I was trying uh, to push forward before the break, that, well, uh, well, you may Jerusalem. break your own law. You may break your own law, but you shouldn't. Should you be breaking Australia's laws as well? well I, it's think it's, I think it's very difficult to imagine. You don't have to be an expert on how covert operations uh, uh, occur in order to realize that uh, Israeli agents or even American agents can't walk into enemy countries like Iran with either Israeli passport or American passport. So the use of passports in, in intelligence, I'm sure, is is uh, very frequent. So uh, while I can understand that the Australians are angry, uh, I think the anger should be limited because presumably they would probably do the same thing. <laughs> but Australia has asked Israel not to do this before. This is the third occasion now, although the case of Benzigia is different from the Dubai operation because that was when passports were simply uh, fabricated or stolen of existing Australian citizens, whereas in this case, Ben Ziggy obviously decided willingly that he was going to join Mossad. And it was prior to the um, Australian request because he joined Mossad many years ago, before the Dubai incident. But even if, even so, I, I, I accept uh, your objection entirely. Uh, the thing is that when you start to do, when, when you're in the business of secret operation, this is what you do. You take risk. And there's another thing that we didn't mention here, which is a problem uh, in Israel, the use of Jews uh, with the risk of uh, the double allegiance uh, behind it. I'm, I'm sure that uh, Australian Jews are very embarrassed today because Australians tell them, hey, who are you, wh who are you working for? Not to mention Australians, Iranian Jews, Israelis. perhaps, who are much more exposed. Sorry? Not to mention Iranian Jews, who what? are much more exposed than, is, uh, than, than Australian ones in Iran. Why? How so? How so? Because if they're running covert operations into Iran, it makes it seem uh, uh, as well, doesn't it, that, uh, that somehow Iranian Jews are complicit? Oh, I don't know. Uh, but there are many problems. Uh, uh, and and the, the, pro the problem is that it's, it's clear that someone took a risk, maybe a very big risk. We don't know what was at stake. We don't know what was at stake. So it's very difficult to, um, to, to, to say that he made, he made a bad judgment, as it is very difficult to say whether or not uh, um, violating uh, Mr. Ziegler's uh, civil rights were justified or not. We, we don't know what was at stake, at stake but in principle, uh, certain goals, and I repeat, certain goals justify certain risks and certain uh, violations of there, civil there is, rights. For example, the the uh, uh, the kidnapping of uh, in the in the 50s of uh, Adolf Eichmann from from Argentina. Yes, there was a violation of international law, 
uh, Israeli agents kidnapped, uh, violated the sovereignty of Argentina. But this happens all, all the time. All and, the time? Well, I don't know. I mean, I I'm not. I'm not familiar with with how covert operation happens. But but you know, but countries. Come on, Ron. Countries there was, apologize. You know, there was, there was outrage over the secret prisons by the CIA. There was outrage. There was genuine outrage over the use of those fake passports. But this, but this has nothing to do with secret prisons. This is not a secret prison. But no, this but is, in this case, it's the you're talking about the, the the issue of people doing things that are extrajudiciary. No, I'm not talking about. Uh, I'm not talking about the the secret prisons and 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 all that. But it so happens that sometimes um, the laws of certain countries are violated uh, in uh, covert operations. And I just gave the the Eichmann case as an example. Um, it is this in this case. Um, this uh, uh, man was uh, was charged with crimes. He was he all right. So the. the he, he, was he went through the judicial process in Israel and was represented well, we by We don't know attorneys. what that judicial process yeah, is yet. Exactly. Yes, but mo in, in most countries, uh, uh, a judicial process that involves the security of the nation uh, can be done under closed doors. Um, and uh, that can happen here, and it can happen in the United States. Uh, that's one of the reasons why. Uh, I mean, Lefebvre, can it happen here? Can yeah. it happen in well, France? I, I just, I just have one remark first. I think the Eichmann case was very specific to the afterwar, and and I, I hope that we will never have another case like this where such just justification. And it, it also provoked outrage at the time. But it, it, I mean, I mean, it's it's not comparable to what's happening today for, for me. That's my opinion. The second thing is. Could it happen here? I'm not sure. No, no matter. The, the question is really, where should we draw the, the line? The judge can order, even in a, in a, in a cour d'assises, oui, when oui, it's the Sûreté Nationale. I mean, on, on a technical, it, the, on a technical point of view. The judge can order, view, can, can order the, uh, the uh, process to, to, be, uh, uh, to, to be under closed doors. Yes, uh, even, on a technical point. Even in point France. Of, yeah, and I even mean, in, on a technical point. And that's point. one of it the reasons true. also why, but, hang on why a sec. we have there's military a, there's a between, you can order, in Guantanamo. There's a difference between a judge ordering a closed door hearing and actually putting a gag order over the entire case. Yes, and the, the other thing is that is that but, here you would have a control by an independent judicial authority on this. But and here, there where, is where, an independent where, judicial where we, authority. We, the we gag orders was issued that, by an independent that judicial control, authority. That control should be public and at least accountable to the people. But it can't be public because it, involve, it would involve disclosing in, military secrets or... or or is, intelligence secrets. Israelis, in any case, clearly divided. Liberal Israeli broadsheet Haaretz uh, calling the affair a catastrophe for Israel, calling for a public inquiry. In a Tuesday editorial, the paper writes uh, uh, the following. How did Zigir come to be held under conditions similar to those of the prime minister's murderer? Did the prison service have complete control over his fate? Or should it have shared this control with the Mossad and Shin Bet? J John Lyons, y y in Israel itself, where you are, uh, how would you get? If, have you gotten a feel for what public opinion is like? Do people want to know more, or do they think that uh, uh, the uh, the way it's been handled is the right way? Well, Israelis are fascinated by this story. The level of interest is quite extraordinary, and everybody seems to have uh, a theory. One of my neighbours was on a bus the other day, and when it came to the top of the hour, the bus driver turned up the news, and everyone on the bus, he says, was absolutely fixated on every detail of this. Opinion is divided, but I think in Israel there's a very strong view that if Mossad or the security services may have overreacted on this occasion or been too hard or too ham-fisted, but they do generally believe that Mossad needs to do what it needs to do. It's in a difficult neighbourhood and sometimes it will go too far. I think that's probably the prevailing view amongst Israelis. Uh, the Israeli internal security minister in Paris this Wednesday, Wednesday and he defended uh, the gag order by the courts. Court in Israel has to be based on facts. And once a judge in Israel decided to extend the time uh, of a prisoner to remain in jail, he has to do it after facts was brought in front of him, and he was convinced that that's the right way. Trust me, it's not easy to convince a judge in Israel to put someone in jail under a different name. Um, so uh, the, the, the minister there saying, put your faith in the court system. 
But it seems as though the Israeli press has not always put its faith in the court system when it comes to issues involving uh, uh, security services. There was a journalist who was pursued, uh, for instance. There was the, the, the documented case of a journalist who was pursued for uh, breaking stories when it, that uh, embarrassed the security services. Um, again, your newspaper, you were reporting on this, on uh, the Prisoner X. Do you think that uh, there was censorship or self-censorship when it came to the way this story was reported between the time he died in late 2010 and now when the story has been uh, broken by, uh, uh, in full by the uh, Australian television? Uh, it's interesting that you use the word censorship because in Israel there is a military censorship. Uh, uh, it's part of the military and the Ministry of the Defense. But uh, if people go today, um, if, the, if the state goes today uh, to see a judge in order to have a gag order, order it's because uh, the military censorship became very, very liberal because of the Supreme Court intervention during the last 30 years. Today, the Israeli military censorship uh, can postpone or, 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 uh, or prohibit the publication of details only if there is an immediate and real threat to a vital Israeli interest. It's very, it's very interesting that the, the, the people in uniform that have the uh, stemple that can, that can deny uh, a newspaper the right to publish are much more liberal than most of, of the judges that uh, uh, the state uh, goes to see when they need this kind of, 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 of court orders. Um, so, so you don't think the gag so, order is and, too and this restrictive? Is, uh, no, I, I, think that the, I think that there is a problem. And I think that uh, the press uh, plays an important, public opinion plays an important role. Uh, there was an evolution in the way that uh, the secret services are treated in Israel. 15 years ago, we didn't know the name and we didn't have the picture of the head of the Shin Bet and the Mossad. Now we know them. Uh, uh, 25 years ago, uh, uh, Avi Dichter, when he was in the Shin Bet, uh, and his friends uh, used to tell uh, uh, a certain version of the truth to judges for, many, for a long time. And everything went OK until a huge scandal in the, in the 1980s. It's called the bus number 300 and things change radically. This is how it functioned in Israel. Uh, these people say, trust me, and at one point they start to abuse the trust, and then there's a debate, because this is a democracy, because we are talking about it here, because already in June 2010, more and more people knew about it. The fact that it's not published, it doesn't mean that there are not tens of journalists, uh, members of the Knesset, judges, people that call each other, uh, uh, officers, Hundreds, thousands of people. Avigdor Feldman is 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 an eminent uh, civil rights lawyer. Uh, many people were. I'm not saying that it can replace full publicity, but there has to be a compromise. And I think that one of the th the way Last out of week, this. There were some calling for, uh, if I get this correctly, uh, censorship or reprimands for members of the Knesset who evoked the case in Parliament, even after and who, the Australian and, and television get, had and talked who, about it. Who said? On my dead body, General Fuad Ben Eliezer, former Minister of Defense, a general, because the, the, after the yeah, election, this after is, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is uh, imagine if a member of the Select Intelligence Committee in the United States uh, went up to the te Senate floor and disclosed everything that was said in in closed doors in the Select Committee. That's but in this that's, case. That's something, and, and, and the debate was whether a member of the Knesset who receives information uh, can use his immunity uh, uh, and uh, disclose secret information um, during the debate on the Knesset. That was the question. John Lyons, uh, in, exactly. the, John Lyons in the case of, uh, uh, of that debate that took place in the Israeli parliament last week, was the secret already out? Well, I think this is a bit different from someone going and disclosing something said in a secret committee. Exactly. This is, they were saying something that had been broadcast on Australian television mm -hmm. and was all over the internet around the world. And I think that um, what we've seen in the last week is that Israel's strange form of military censorship uh, is now becoming more and more irrelevant with the internet. Um, and I think they're having to wrestle with that.
um, and this week has shown that's the case. All right. So the internet changes, uh, changing, of course, uh, as we've well. Been, we've been hearing, hear, <coughs> we've been hearing that for 20 years. Uh, it's less and less effective, but uh, it's still a little bit effective. You can you can win some time, and had it not for the, for, for for this court order, uh, this thing would be out three years ago, and we don't know what we'd have missed <laughs> during the three years. They had the time, maybe. Uh, to close the, 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 the Milanese society and create another one, to, to pull out people. Sometimes you, you, all you need I, is 48 hours. I just want, it's, it's, it's important to note, and I read this in, in, in the uh, newspapers today, that uh, an inquest was headed by a very prominent Israeli judge looked into the circumstances in which uh, this man committed suicide, and she found uh, no uh, wrongdoing. She said that there might be negligence, uh, uh, but uh, she didn't, there was no, um, uh, she, she did not find that there was any external intervention in the, um, in the uh, suicide of this, uh, of this gentleman. That's what she found. Yeah. Uh, but as John Lyons was saying at the top, he's still asking for, for, for more proof of that. Uh, John, where does this story go from now? Uh, we, because as you said, it's the third time that, uh, the Australian government has a, a run-in with the Israelis. Well, I think um, the Israelis will be extra careful now, I think, in terms of Australia, because Australia is, has been a long-time friend uh, at a government level of Israel, and that's the line that, is, that Australia keeps saying to Israel, we are a friend of yours, you should not do this to us. Where it goes, though, is I think inside Israel there will be a, a serious examination of Mossad and how it operates and what it does, because this is also a failure of Mossad, that um, they did recruit this person, he was in their system, and I know Gil said earlier that he was probably lower level, but if you're working for Mossad and you're in Iran, to me that's not lower level, that's pretty serious and heavy duty, yet it looks like this, this man would often tell people in bars or when he was having a drink mm -hmm. that he was working for Mossad which of course is something that in a secret service you just can't do. Right, and so also, it, it, he changed his name and passport so many times Mr. 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 going Lyons, in and out it's of a, Australia. It's a, it's, it's a question, unfortunately, that we'll, ha we'll have to broach another time because we're out of time. But John Lyons, I want to thank you for joining us uh, from Jerusalem. I want to thank Gil Mahaili, Ron Sofer, and Amélie Lefebvre. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.